everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari ST A to Z, where today we have reached D, which means it's time for Dynamite Ducks, or Dynamite Dukes, I guess if you want to be uh, picky with the umlaut. So this was one of several games released through a partnership between Sega and Activision, and it was actually developed by Core Design, again, uh, we saw Carve Up from Core Design in the previous episode. Yeah, this was developed by Core Design too. Uh, it was released in 1988 in the arcades. And the arcade original was one of Yu Suzuki's games. Um, and alongside the ST port that we see here, it was also ported to Amiga, Amstrad, C64 and Spectrum. And all of those versions came along in 1989, as you can see down in the corner. So this game is somewhat notorious these days for having an alternate intro sequence uh, that is very offensive. Um, but you can only access that by editing the game disc with a hex editor, which we're not going to do today, but that offensive intro does exist uh, online if you care to check it out. It's, it's quite amusing. So yeah, like I say, the ST port of this was developed by Core Design, um, and one noteworthy name attached to this is Ben Douglish, who was responsible for porting uh, Hiroshi Kawaguchi's tunes from the arcade original to this, and he did a very good job, in my opinion. So... Let's have a look. One day, Lucy was playing with her pets Bin and Pin in a beautiful flower garden. Then suddenly, an evil black shadow appeared and changed into Achacha, the great... Achacha the Great, while they were talking. Lucy started... Lucy, startled and frightened, was kept in a miracle ball and taken away to Achacha world by Achacha the Great. Sorry, just the, just the phrasing of that intro is very strange. Therefore, Bin and Pin rose up and ventured into a cha-cha world to rescue her. The fact that it's all in lowercase and sort of almost cursive is uh, <laughs> makes it a little bit tricky to read. But yeah, there's the story. Lucy's been kidnapped and her pets, Bin and Pin, the ducks, are going to rescue her. So, I just got to insert disc two now, so I'll be right back. All right, disc two inserted. And now loading the first stage. So if you've never come across this game before, and I would be surprised if you had, to be perfectly honest, because it's not one of Sega's better known games, uh, it's a beat-em-up. In which you play bin and or pin, and must work your way through several stages, punching things in the face, and trying not to get hit. It's a bit different from other beat-em-ups though. Most stuff goes down in one hit. And there's quite a strong focus on weapons in this. So you'll find lots of weapons lying around. And you want to make good use of them to dispatch your foes. And you'll see down in the lower left corner there's a little counter showing how many of each weapon you've got on hand. And a little touch that I quite like is that um, that works in the same way as the missiles indicator in Afterburner. So it has like large icons representing I think 10 shots of a weapon and then small icons representing one. And you see, there's some interesting ideas in this, like splash damage. One thing I do find quite funny is... Um, I looked this up on, on Wikipedia earlier, just to see if there was anything I missed about it that uh, couldn't be found on places like Atari Mania and such like. And uh, whoever wrote the article about this on Wikipedia thought that the health bar at the bottom was unusual. I have no idea why, because like a health bar like that is not unusual at all. I think they were trying to make the point that at the time it was more common to see health bars of a single colour. But really all that's doing is showing when you're in good health, when you're in moderate health and when you're in critical health. Which is helpful information. Now, as far as how this conf uh, compares to the arcade version, um, not bad to be honest. 
it's a little bit slower than the arcade version. As you can see, the, the whole thing is, is moving at a fairly laid-back, sedate sort of pace. The arcade version isn't much faster, but it is a little bit faster to a noticeable degree. So, But aside from that, the, the graphics are pretty close. And Ben Daglish's porting of the music is very good. Using the limited resources of the SD sound chip, just three channels of audio, he's managed to really capture the essence of the original music. And I feel like the music is a big part of the appeal of this game. Both at home and in the arcade. Because it's what gives the game its distinctive atmosphere. Whoops. Ow. And as usual, we don't really have any... In fact, we don't have any sound effects while we're playing, because the music's playing. We talked a little bit about this with Carve Up. That's not at all uncommon for 16-bit games in general, not just ST ones. Because both the ST and the Amiga only had a limited number of sound channels to play with, A lot of developers just thought, well, let's get some music in there because that that sounds a bit better. This is awkward. Got plenty of healing items. I think as well what we have with this is the quite common situation that you have with home ports of arcade games, which is that this version is quite a bit easier than the arcade version. Partly because it's slower, but partly just I think it's a little bit... it's balanced a little bit more in favour of the player. I think there's more healing items. I don't think you take quite as much damage. And there's certain things like this, this boss is a little more complex in the arcade. He has more rocks surrounding him. I think, to be honest, that's that's part technical limitation and that, and part making it a bit fairer for the home player. Whee! But either way, yeah, this is this is a pretty solid port. It's probably not going to be to everyone's taste because of the the fairly sedate pace of the whole thing. But um, yeah, I like it. It's, it's enjoyable. It's got a nice atmosphere to it. And it works well. You slightly annoying enemies on this stage. There's moles popping out of nowhere. You do get a bit of advanced notice, I guess. There's an example of the um, the ammunition counter I was talking about at the bottom. So there we got one, two, three, four, five, and then ten more for each of the large icons. This boss is very annoying. Yeah, this this boss is one of the one of the less well designed parts of the game, and it was it was a bit like that in the arcade version. But I think actually the collision detection in the arcade version was a little more um, a little more lenient because you could you could sort of shoot the um, the kids who were carrying the the bits of the dragon as well as just the bits of the dragon.
But yeah, there's lots of little things in this game that I like that are a little bit unusual. Like I, I, I enjoy the um, the way your score constantly increases as you're moving forwards. She got myself stuck in the background there. <laughs> Hopefully that won't be too much of a problem. I guess I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't move up or down at all. can't jump out of it. I can't jump into the background. So I guess we just keep walking. That's the other thing I like about this game is the, the, the goal meter at the top. Showing you exactly how far through the stage you've got to go. I've just noticed his facial expression changes depending on his health as well. That's neat. But yeah, I guess we just, I guess for now we just walk. We just walk. Oh, we could die, I guess. That's a boss. Nope. If we die, hopefully it will respawn us back in a walkable part of the screen. For now, just trudging onwards, ever onwards. Surviving remarkably well considering a complete inability to dodge. But this will probably uh, take care of us. Get out of the background. Oh, you seriously are you going to tell me the boss can't reach me? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a problem. Oh, I can hit them, though. I can hit the clouds around him anyway. That's better than nothing. This is unfortunate. I'm terribly sorry. I was enjoying myself up to this as well. Yeah, give me your busted ass game core design. Disgraceful. Yeah, I'm not getting out of here anytime soon, am I? Danger! Does that mean I'm taking too long? Yes. Yes, it does. There we go. There we go. At last. Relief. Sweet relief. Ooh. Well, this guy's a bit of a prick. <laughs> I think we've got three continues, eh? So let's let's see how far we can get. Continue, yes, please. Punchy, 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 punch, 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 punch. Oh dear. bit closer. Let's get rid of those clouds. We'll be sorted. Oh. I probably could have killed him from the background. 
because it seems he was taking damage from me hitting the clouds as well. Never mind. Onward to the next stage. Bonus game, boxing match. So this is where you and the, the other player, you fight. And whoever wins gets some sort of bonus, I think. It's not the most in-depth fighting system you'll ever see. But it's something. It's something to do. And it's, <laughs> it's Colonel Sanders presiding over the match. I saw there was, a, there was a Kentucky Fried Chicken in the background of one of the stages. The first one, I think. Stage 3, Jungle. Danger. Couldn't tell if that was full damage or just uh, me getting hit at the same time I fell down the pit. Oh dear, it is getting harder now. Lots more enemies showing up on screen at once. sensible use of these weapons. But as you can see, with things like the bombs, because they have the splash damage effect, you don't have to be exact with aiming them, which is nice. I guess you can jump to dodge some of these attacks as well. this you jump to dodge missiles no well, you can shoot the missiles though that's something I would have liked this game for one very specific reason I've talked about this a few times on this series before, about how when I was a kid, I had certain weird, very specific things about video games that I liked. One of them was racing games with hills in, platformers with hills in. Um, and for a while, I was absolutely obsessed with the idea of games showing visible onomatopoeia, sort of comic book style. And I suspect I would have had a lot of time for this game based on all the little biffs and pows and booms from you punching dudes. Die. Incidentally, if you're wondering how I am attacking and jumping using a single button controller, as you would have done on the Atari ST, uh, jump is actually mapped to spacebar in single player mode, but it's mapped to, I think, shift if you're playing uh, two player mode. Yeah, this is one area where emulators can help because playing this on Atari as we are, Atari maps the spacebar by default to B on most controllers. So you've got A is your main fire button, and spacebar is automatically mapped to B. You don't have to do anything special to make that work. It's just set up by default because it's because it was such a common secondary button in ST games. I guess they thought, well, we might as well we might as well just put it in. 
because it's going to be useful for quite a lot of things. And sure enough, here we are, finding it useful. Get out of here. Yeah, this is, this is a fun little game. I can say the, the slow speed might put a lot of people off. But once you get used to that, of the very deliberate way the game plays, it gives you plenty of time to get into position and to avoid enemies and to set up your own attacks. Once you realise the whole game has been designed around that that sense of pace, or lack thereof, it makes a lot of sense. The one thing it does lack a little bit is a good sense of impact for the hits. I mean, yes, yes the enemies do do sort of flinch and go flying and so on but it's kind of difficult to feel like the the weapons are fine it's the punches it's hard to feel like they're really connecting sometimes And also the fact that the, the punches are so short range as well. To make bosses like this quite difficult because it's it's kind of hard to see what you're supposed to be doing really. I think I think I'm supposed to just Put the fires out. Continue. And we have to do that with the weapon, not the... We can't do it by punching. Because that makes sense, because you can't put a fire out by punching it. Much as I'm sure some action movies would like us to believe otherwise. There we go. All done, at last. <coughs> Onwards. Stage four, Chicago. Looks just like the real thing. I think part of the issue is what I was talking about with the enemies isn't terribly consistent. So like these enemies are fine because like they, they've got a proper flinch animation when you hit them and they they sort of jump and then fall off the screen when you hit them same for these ones but there were a couple at the start of the stage that just sort of didn't seem to really respond to being hit at all i don't think we're going to survive much longer Yeah, the, the lack of impact on the bosses is a bit of a problem. I 
Like here, you can barely see whether he, whether or not you're hitting him. Oh, he does, he does flinch. He'll pull a silly face, at least. The positioning there is so... Yeah, positioning there is weird. Inconsistent, I think, is the word. All right, I'm going to pop this one back in. I'll be right back. And that's that. Back to the title. I was wondering if we would have some sort of elaborate game over sequence, but apparently not, I guess. That's... It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not my favourite, but it's equally not terrible. It's a... A decent example of, of core design sort of working with, with what they got, I guess. Because I think some of the some of the issues with this game are kind of more fundamental problems with the original arcade game rather than necessarily what core were doing. As far as I can tell from my limited experience with the arcade game, this is a, a fairly true port, aside from the slightly slower speed. But the the music is good. The graphics are good. The action in the first couple of stages is decent. Yeah, I, I think it just suffers a bit from the design of the later stages, and I think that's more an issue with the original game than the conversion. So yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. So that was Dynamite Ducks from Core Design, Sega and Activision for Atari ST. Just remains for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.